Welcome back to the show. You know, there is nothing in the world that relaxes me more than curling up with a good book. I read so many books that I feel like I'm always on the hunt for new suggestions. And then finding that next great book is actually harder than you think. You feel me on this? But there is one person I know who never gets it wrong, and she's here with her latest suggestions. Misha Stone from the Seattle Public Library joins me now. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Amity. You have seriously never led me astray <laughs> when it comes to your book suggestions. And I'm just, I'm so grateful because who doesn't love falling in love with books, even if you don't read? Right, exactly. And I, I feel like in the winter, there are just different moods that you are wanting to capture. Yeah. And you have to find that right book for the right mood. So I was thinking about different moods that a reader might be in in the winter. Um, so I wanted to start us off with a historical novel, because sometimes you just want to be taken to another time and place. Yes. Um, and uh, The Whalebone Theater, it's a debut novel set in Dorset, England, and it's about the Seagrave family. They're a quirky family. They live on the seaside. and when a whale washes up, they actually use the bones for a theater, <gasps> and they put on little plays with the, their bohemian friends, but when war sets in, it actually becomes a story about spy craft and fighting Nazis. Oh. So it's one of those books that if you liked The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, you should give it a try. This is beautiful. The, the cover art is amazing. The Whalebone Theater, a novel. I do love a novel, but we also have The Terraformers, which looks like so my jam. <laughs> yeah, so this is a book that um, is coming out later this month. It'll be a peak pick. And Annalee Newitz themselves calls it a warm embrace with some spiky bits. It's a far future uh, a story about basically terraforming a planet with a wonderful cast of characters. There are, alongside the human workers, a sentient train, flying moose, robots, and I tell you, you will get attached to each and every one of these characters. But oh, what I nice. love about this book is that it's smart and uplifting. It's the perfect antidote to the dystopian stories that are popular right now. You took the words, uh, yeah. <laughs> question out of my head. <laughs> yeah, it actually gives hope and possibility. That is what I love. I love a, some like a futuristic story, but like you said, they're always so dystopian. So I can't wait to read this one. All right, Paladin's Grace. This oh, looks like an interesting book. This may be your jam because it's actually it's historical fantasy and romance <gasps> mixed with a little mystery and horror. And it manages to somehow do all those things while staying cozy and funny. Mm -hmm. And it is about Stephen, who's a paladin, and Grace, who is a perfumer. They are two people who don't believe that they deserve love and second chances in life. Mm -hmm. They end up combining forces to find a murderer in their small town. This is a weird, wild book, and it's the first in a series. Okay, you know, you did that one for me. I can't <laughs> wait to read that yes, one. Yes. Africa Risen, what is this about? Yeah, so um, anthologies in the winter are a great way to just, sometimes you don't want to read a big book, you want to just try little things. Yeah. Africa Risen, edited by Agana Chavwe, Donald Ekpeki, uh, Sheree Renee Thomas, mm -hmm. and Zelda Knight. Um, it brings together stories along the speculative fiction genre, uh, and it's basically African writers and writers from the diaspora writing science fiction, fantasy, horror, myth, and it's got established authors like Tanana Reeve Dew and Stephen Barnes, and then up and coming authors like Toby Ogandiran, who has a short story in here about a terrifying librarian who goes after a man when his book is one day late. Oh! <laughs> You're like, but, watch out. Yeah, there's something for everyone in this anthology. Can you kind of take a moment to uh, just describe speculative fiction a little bit? Because oh. I think it's a little bit of a hard concept for viewers or readers to grasp. Yeah, absolutely. It is sort of that, that spectrum of things that are in that science fiction, fantasy, mm -hmm. horror, mythology, slipstream. So there are so many stories that are telling um, their stories from a variety of different genres. Mm -hmm. and Speculative fiction is the umbrella that they're all sort of underneath. I love that. And this book has just a bunch of short stories. And, That's right. And fun. So if you just want to pick this up occasionally and, and peruse it, what a great thing. Uh, Red Paint. Yeah, so Red Paint is um, a Coast Salish author's memoir. And it is about her sort of like looking into the history of her ancestors in our region. And it is also a memoir of healing and trauma. But it also goes into her love of punk rock and her love of pop culture. Lots of shout outs to The Goonies. Nice. And Twin Peaks, um, while she's also connecting with the women and her family over time. This is one of those stories about indigenous history and healing that will resonate with a lot of readers. I think that's a really powerful story. And it's also nice to know, you know, when it's when it's something local that we can all connect with, maybe help to find a deeper understanding. Absolutely. I love it. All right, this last um, book. So the last book, I could not get my hands on um, Rough Sleepers by Tracy Kidder because it came out yesterday, but I wanted to bring a book by the, the subject of that book, um, Dr. Jim O'Connell. So you might know Tracy Kidder from Mountains Beyond Mountains, which is also about a man who has tried to make the world a better place. Uh -huh. 
Rough Sleepers is about Dr. Jim O'Connell, who's been working on the streets of Boston with a, a crew of nurses for more than 35 years with the homeless and insecurely housed there. And it tells the story of Dr. Jim's journey, but it also tells the story of all the people he meets along the way over the decades of his career. It really gives um, a face and a context to the issues of homelessness mm -hmm. and the very real people at the heart of it. Well, that's important too, because I think sometimes it's hard for us to all adjust our, our vision on that. So let me get this straight. The book is about the man who wrote that book. So yes, exactly. So this is um, uh, James O'Connell's uh, book that's in the library collection as well, which is called Stories from the Shadows. Okay. Um, but Tracy Kidder, who is just a wonderful journalist, spent five years with Dr. Jim oh, wow. on the streets of Boston looking at, at sort of the work he does. Mm -hmm. And again, there are those people that are just slowly trying to do what they can. Dr. Jim says, this is what we do while we're waiting for the world to change. Yeah. Rough Sleepers is a fantastic book. I love it. Another thing that's fantastic is the Seattle Public Library's online lending library. And so in my, in my book club recently, <laughs> they were all, I couldn't believe that I don't use it. So, and I thought, you know what, I don't know why I haven't used it. Can you talk a little bit about how someone signs up for it, uses it? It's a different app, right? That's right. So Overdrive um, via the Libby app is how you can download, you know, 25 e-books or e-audio books a month or, or at a time. Mm -hmm. um, at a time? At a time. Wow. So it's a lot. But it's sometimes you want to try different things, right? Yeah. And that's the beauty of the library is that you can just give something a try. It turns itself in. That's the beautiful thing about the online catalog. But there are a lot of amazing things that we also have always available on okay. there. We also have curated lists from our librarians who do the ordering for our e-material. So there's just a lot of great suggestions and we're always happy to help you find more to On read. the Libby app itself? On the Libby app itself. Okay, so you just go into the app store, you search Libby app, and then it'll ask you which library you say, Seattle Public Library, and then it asks you for your card right. number. It, you can log in so easily with your card number and PIN number, and then it leads you through, you know, Seattle Public Library and all that we have to offer in our um, e-book and I downloadable materials. I yeah. can't believe, I'm going to get on it. You're going to be yeah. so amazed. And I'm just so <laughs> glad to have, you know, all these things at my fingertips because, you know, I love a good book and I just love all these suggestions. So thank you, Misha. You, I don't see you enough, my friend. <laughs> same, same. Thank all you right. so much. We'll have to have you on more. Thank you.